This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Coffee Newsbreak, your place for condensed global coffee industry news, events, and resources posted daily. Find Coffee Newsbreak on Instagram at Coffee Newsbreak or check the show notes for details. Welcome to the Daily Coffee Pro by Mapper Forward, friends. I'm your host, Lee Safar, and we are joined for episode four of our five part series with Kira Kennedy. And today we are talking about something that is a little bit controversial in our industry right now, but certainly very prevalent. We're going to talk about quiet quitting. Um, Kira, I want to start this conversation by asking, have you have you noticed throughout your career that quiet quitting was ever a thing before? No, no I um, I think this is pretty new to me. So for those who don't know what quiet quitting is, uh, there is a recent episode on the podcast that is all about quiet quitting, but so that we can keep this self-contained, quiet quitting is all about staying in your job and doing just what you are uh, employed to do, just what your job description says. So if you're a barista, uh, you will do the job of a barista. And if it hasn't been stipulated that you should clear tables uh, or bus tables, you don't do it. That's that's what quiet quitting is. Is that how you understand quiet quitting, Kira? Yes. And so how do you feel as like this is something very new? Uh, Definitely in my career, this is something that's very new. What What are your thoughts on quiet quitting? Yeah, I think it's new and I I think it's really difficult for leaders to, it, it's difficult for me to put my arms around of what exactly it means. Mm. Uh, and I think part of what's, I don't know if we understand the nuances of what's going on after COVID, what's going on with um, new generations of workers, what's going on in um, some, I think, some interesting conversations about life-work balance and Mm -hmm. what's important. I think um, a lot of young people are frustrated with what they see my generation has done with with non-life work balance, working too much, uh, maybe oriented too much towards results and revenues and not enough towards living a good life, maybe not enough to um, values and social justice and some of the things that are important. So I think it's, it's a lot of things. And I think it's also mixed up in there's been conversations of the great resignation and a lot of studies that have said the great resignation is hitting companies that have toxic cultures more than companies that have good good cultures and i think that quiet quitting is another piece of that Mm. um, in that instead of just quitting what you're doing what people are saying is i need a job I need to stay in this job uh, and I will do my job, uh, but I'm not going to go above and beyond my job. And, Mm -hmm. or, or they might, it might be something different than that. I don't know that the research has come out to exactly what anybody is thinking. And it's a very personal thing of what different people are thinking, but, um, yeah, it's a diff- It's going to be a difficult leadership management company and people to figure out how we solve this problem. I mean, where does it go? You know, the 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 problem is when you quietly quit, you're hurting yourself as well. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that as much as I just was listening to this podcast and they were talking about that. And that at least when you are standing up for what you believe and and talking about what you would like changed and asking for a change, 
um, you're getting some of that energy out. Whereas if you're quietly quitting, you're still sitting in the situation. And right. that doesn't seem like it would be a very healthy thing for people to be in. There's, there's no way to get rid of that negative energy. It doesn't seem. It also doesn't sound like it leads to any kind of resolution of anything. It doesn't, my big problem with quiet quitting is we're no longer talking about fixing anything where, where I would much rather somebody left a workplace than stayed somewhere because it was toxic and their way of protesting was to just do their job. I see that that as being more functional. Go and work for somebody who is going to cultivate a healthy work environment for you if that's something that's available to you rather mm -hmm. than staying somewhere that's convenient. Um, but again, that's me putting all of my stuff on that idea of, of quiet quitting. I think it's, like you said, super, super complicated. Um and I think the great resignation was the first iteration of people saying, well, screw this. I don't want to be somewhere where I'm underappreciated or it's a toxic environment. I'm just leaving and I'm going to go find work somewhere else. Now, like great resignation 2.0 is, well, I have to work somewhere. So now I'm just going to do the base minimum. But now we end up in a stalemate. And I'm really confused about where this goes next because – we have small businesses going out of business for no, I mean, I, I want to say for no good reason. Obviously there's a good reason um, and that's being played out in the market right now. But I had a conversation with someone in Melbourne uh, around mice and he said post-pandemic and Melbourne got hit really, really hard with the lockdowns and he said, Coming out of that, I've been able to reopen 12 cafes and I haven't been able to open the other 12 cafes. And it's not because customers aren't trying to beat down our doors and say, please reopen. It's that I can't find staff. And when I speak to staff, what they want is completely unreasonable. And I feel like this is... We're in deadlock here and it's almost a necessary deadlock because on one side you've got um, an industry that has such a low barrier to entry that leadership is not really required for success. Mm -hmm. And on the other side you've got a low barrier to entry for employees and professionalism isn't something that's required for success and to me that sounds like a soup that is just ready for yeah I mean like what could go wrong <laughs> what could go wrong in that situation uh and and we're now in this scenario where the whole hospitality industry is being brought to its knees because of this situation whether it's the great resignation or it's quite quitting and one solution is that employers turn around and say, well, the only way I can problem solve this is fuck it. I'm going to go and automate and I'm, you know, I'll need one person to work in my cafe just to take care of all the equipment. Is that what customers want? Is I mean, this is where all the other things that we've spoken about with regards to leadership really come into the mix, right? <sighs> oh, Lee, it's a big this is one. so hard because as, <laughs> as being a customer, I recently was uh, again out of town uh -huh. and I was going out for coffee every morning and we went out to this great little tiny hole in the wall cafe that had great coffee and it was run by one woman and the line was out the door and she's managing to produce coffee, get payment, take the order, do all of it herself. And I was amazed. And yeah. I, I said, are you the owner of this business? And she said, no. And we, we watched her for four solid days. And then she, the place was closed on Sunday. So we went and found a different place. 
And they had an order system, I think, probably like what you're talking about, where you ordered on the computer and you had to figure out exactly what you wanted. And they had two people behind the bar and we were the only two people there. And it took five minutes to get our drinks. And Mm. I was looking at the difference in, and I guess I can say the per- first person was probably overworked. It was absolutely crazy how hard she was working. Mm. But it was, I think for her, there was this rhythm and this uh, feeling of chit-chatting with people and getting her job done and getting through it. And she seemed to be much more satisfied with what was going on than the other two who who were doing almost nothing. And so now this is my point of view, of course, Mm -hmm. but to think as a customer, you know, which one I go back to in a second, the one with the long line, whether the coffee was better or not, I would have gone back to the one with the long line. It was just incredible. It was, I just enjoyed being in her cafe and I enjoyed watching her energy and her passion for getting it done and it it just felt like a place I wanted to put my money in my business. The, this is going to be really interesting to see how this plays out in the world in our industry don't you think? It is and it's I, I think this piece of our conversation is is the saddest and most frustrating for me is that you can really see both sides of the equation. Yeah. I mean, um, I think I, over the last year, have had some very difficult conversations and they were around these types of issues, I mm. think. And I do remember not feeling um, like I I could make a win-win situation out of it. It just felt uh, that I didn't, and maybe what I should say is I didn't even really understand what the problem was. And I was trying to listen and and trying to help the other person feel heard. And I just could not figure out how, what the expectation was that we could meet. And um, they felt listened to. I mean, one of the things that came out of the conversation is they said, thank you very much for taking the time and listening. But I didn't walk away feeling like we had solved a problem, either for us, for the company and or for the employee. It just felt like it was still there. I don't know that the solution is here yet for this. I feel like this is one of those things that we have to sit in for some time. Because perhaps the reason this has happened because we've kicked the can down the road for too long uh, on solving these kinds of relationships between underpaid employees and um, business owners a lot of the time. Well, I guess that comes down to expectations, right? Unmet Mm. expectations on both sides. And... uh, yeah, I, you, especially if you don't even know what the expectations are or how you would possibly be able to meet them. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which the uncertainty that this conversation has ended up on, um, it really does <laughs> set us up perfectly for our final conversation in our series, which is about the future and leadership and success into the future. So peace of and peanut butter, everybody. Have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in, friends. There are two ways you can support this podcast. Firstly, become a paid member of our YouTube channel. Secondly, you can join our Patreon for as little as $3 a month. Both have options for exclusive ad-free content and early release content. Don't forget to subscribe and like this video before you leave and check the show notes for more information. Now, this is what you should check out next.